Hello, everyone. We are in for a special evening tonight. When she speaks, people lean in to listen. She has politics in her blood, and she's a consummate journalist, fair, balanced. My dear friend, Gwen Eiffel. Gwen Eiffel, those are just some of the stories we're covering on tonight's PBS NewsHour. You know, we talk on the phone how many times a day? A few. A few times a day. And so you get to sort of eavesdrop, I guess, on the conversations that we have. But this is going to be even more personal, because we're going to explore what makes Gwen Eiffel so special. For many years, you have been in this chair. But tonight, we're turning the tables. I get to interview you. That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Go but ahead. before we get started, there's someone who has a special message for you. OK. Can we take a listen before we yes. start? Yes. OK. Listen. What I like about this moment is that last time that I did something for History Makers, you were doing the interviewing, and now this time it's about you. You have had, Gwen, an extraordinary career. And every time I see you described in, in various publications, you always described as the best African-American female reporter, news person, anchor. I think you're not the best African-American reporter. You are just the best. Vernon Jordan's here in the audience tonight. Vernon, would you please stand? Let us all honor you also. And many people around the globe with you feel like they already know you because they listen to you, they watch you, and they already have a sense of who you are and a sense of your storytelling. But tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to learn a little bit more about who you are and how you do your work. And I want to ask you just what do you think is the, is the most important ingredient in what you do? Accessibility. Yeah. I, you talk about people who think they know you. I once had a former boss walk up to me at a party and say, last time I saw you, I was naked. OK. Well, that's. <laughs> and I responded, was I there? <laughs> <laughs> what he meant is he, he had seen me on the Today Show or something. It was early in the morning. And he decided that he felt familiar in a way we never were. But it's good. It's good, because in order to tell stories, in order to bring people's um, understanding of our world uh, and make them listen to you, they have to feel that they trust you. They have to think, you know this. You do it better if you find a way to communicate directly with them. People have a sense that they know you, but there's a lot that they don't know about I you. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to learn a little My bit My family about is here. Tonight. They know things. They're right here. They're smiling at us in the front row. And, and we're, we'll have a chance to meet some of them, because we want to learn a little bit more about the Eiffel family. There were six kids in the family. Let's learn a little bit about where you come from, your backstory. Okay. Let's take a look. Gwen was born in 1955 the same year that Rosa Parks was arrested in Montgomery, Alabama, to an activist preacher father and a strong-willed mother. Her dad had black consciousness, and he fit very prominently in the whole civil rights movement and also sowed that spirit into his children. My father was what used to be called a race man, meaning he was very, very strong in his belief in uh, the dignity of uh, African Americans. We grew up with a strong sense of pride. Uh, we called ourselves black before that 
term became actually popularly known, but also a real sort of sense of ourselves as, as having an identity beyond just simply kids. We are the daughters of two pretty amazing brothers who in many ways shaped us. They had a kind of incisive wit. They were incredibly intelligent. They were deeply engaged in the affairs of the day. Um, there were three newspapers in my home every day and probably the same in Gwen's. And believe it or not, I think she always, almost always wanted to be a journalist. She was always curious. She always wanted to get sort of the story, if you will. She was always interested in what people were saying uh, about issues or about each other. Uh, she naturally gravitated to journalism and communications, even before we really knew what it was. Ignoring the advice of a bad guidance counselor, Gwen was admitted to Boston's Simmons College in 1973, at the height of Boston's busing crisis where riots and protests were a frequent occurrence. At Simmons, she would find a mentor in her journalism professor and an internship at the Boston Herald. Her journalism career was off to a great start. I love that picture. <laughs> I like all of